Right, the shipping container themselves are about $4,000. They're okay. almost immaterial. It's almost free. I'm in North Carolina. It is freezing, it is cold, and it's wet. But I am here to give you information about a tiny home builder here that is actually going to be starting a tiny home neighborhood. And he's going to give us all the information that he knows about tiny home building. You guys had a ton of questions. I posted them on my community page, and the questions that you had were amazing. And I'm going to be giving you a tour of the tiny homes he does have here. Currently, there's three. There's a container home that he's starting. There's a little tiny home that I'm staying in here tonight and there's another container home on the other side of the property. So we'll get a little tour of all three of those. Well, there's there's been some questions about if they're mobile homes or what are they? And so I've been saying before is that what I've been building is very, a little bit unique. The, thing, the problem with tiny homes a lot of times is about 90% of tiny homes that people read about, they're built on trailers. Yes. And because they're built on trailers, the DMV considers them to be RVs. Right. And because they're RVs, almost no municipality or town will allow you to set them up. Mine are actually built on foundation, either concrete piers or slab. And that's how we do it differently. So these are actually real homes. We follow all international standards, but they're on a small scale. Okay, so the shipping container as well is a is considered a home and it's on it, a, it is. permanent foundation. But that was a very hard to convince people even <laughs> after we had all the codes and all the regulations to say this is not a manufactured home, this is a true home. But when you actually build them, the costs add up very, very quickly. But this is also a luxury tiny home. It has a heated floor in the bathrooms. It's got a six foot shower. It's that, that's an 80 square foot bathroom. Mm -hmm. So we went out a little bit higher end. Okay. And so we spent quite a bit of money. The garage door is quite expensive as well to actually all the framing. And so I, there's a person on YouTube that can build, or he, the material wise is between twenty dollars and $30,000. But you're looking at labor, about 2X of your material cost if you're gonna do this with a general contractor. Perspective. I mean, this thing's very energy efficient and people are running this thing all day during the summer and you're looking at about $60 a month in energy costs. So how do you handle the humidity and the heat? Because I, you know, I think about a shipping container and it's metal. So how do you keep it from not like burning up inside? Like, how does that work? So again, these are permittable and these are actually, we follow all state codes. Right. And so you have to have insulation. All right. But normally the issue with basically shipping containers, they're only eight feet wide. Mm -hmm. So when you do a conventional style insulation and you do the drywall, you're gonna lose about three or four inches on each side. Okay. So you're now down to seven foot six, which is not a big difference, but it actually makes a huge impact, right? Right. And so we actually did the insulation on the outside instead. Uh-huh. And that changes. So then we're eight feet on the inside, and we did the spray and insulation on the outside, and then we did tin on the outside. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Very efficient. And an example was that we were building over the summer. This was over 100 degrees in here during the day. As soon as we sprayed it, it went down to 75 to 80. It dropped that much, even before we added the siding. So they're very energy efficient. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So the last tiny home video I did was with a 67 year old woman who lives in a tiny shed home and you guys complained and said I didn't show enough of her house. So I'm not gonna keep you waiting on this video. I'm gonna show you all three of the tiny homes right now. Roll the beautiful music.
I don't know if you know this, but um, some people have watched my old content and I was terrified that there wasn't gonna actually be a tiny home here because this guy- I saw your text message, it was a little bit of panic. So where is it, where is it? But, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. there was this guy that lured me out to spur Texas that, Seriously? yeah, there was no homes. Is that true? 100, there's the videos on there. Now, I want you to understand that I didn't just haphazardly find this guy and just ask him to go film his homes. Because as you know, in past videos I've done, there has been people that have claimed they have these tiny home communities and they're full of garbage. So I didn't want that to happen again. So he does have a legitimate website and I checked it all out. And then the homes that he actually has listed are the homes that I saw on the property. A new home that just popped up is this one right here. And it, he just had it delivered today. So I want you to know about that one. And to double make sure of what he was saying and claiming that he was actually going to be starting a community in the North Carolina area. I ended up finding an article and yes, it is true. Even though this image is a stock image and I always tell you to be warned of that, he is actually doing a community in the area. Right, well, there's a lot of press when it comes to tiny home companies too, mm -hmm. but a lot of them aren't even making the homes. It's just the concept. Yes, this is that's an excellent point. So I don't want to be in construction. Right. That was never my intention. Correct. My videos would go into these small towns figure out places they needed us. Mm -hmm. I'm now kind of an expert in Airbnb about figuring these things out. And that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But I had to go into basically into actually construction because to buy these, mm -hmm. you start at 140, 150 mm -hmm. and goes up to $250,000 pretty easy on some of these units. I could not find anything affordable. Right. And so I could build for 60, 70, 80 mm -hmm. and that's a huge Delta. So I ended up building and that's what I had to do. But I would love for somebody else to take over this and actually make them affordable. So and, yep. what about the municipalities here? So did you, were you able to like, do you have to have your own individual well? Cause there's three on this property. So right, so it depends on the project. So here in Warrington, this, I bought 1.8 acres of land mm -hmm. and we had to subdivide it to seven different parcels. Okay. So we can build one house on each of the parcels. Okay. But in Littleton, it's zoned commercial. So uh -huh. I don't have to do that. Uh -huh. So to answer your question, yes, we get kind of screwed on that. Uh -huh. that we have to pay about a hundred dollars per month per each parcel just for the sewer and water. Oh, uh, okay. And, and basically the garbage as well. Right. So it's quite expensive. <laughs> yeah, that would be, that would it, be it, it adds up. But again, this is what we had to do for the town. Uh -huh. And that's what they wanted us to be here because we pay taxes. Yeah. And we pay into the system. Right, right. Well, that's it. And that's what, like, I talk about that with affordable housing options. Like, if people wouldn't be so negative towards them, there, there would be tax dollars that are coming into the community. So Absolutely. if you allow them to do it, you know, it make a big difference. There, there are people that are interested in different sort of avenues and methods of what they want to live in. But what I build right now is, you know, tiny homes in smaller communities. That's sort of my niche, okay. and it's been very lucrative. You know, we, we really want to support small towns. You know, small towns are the backbone of America's success, mm -hmm. and, but sometimes they don't have modern tourist accommodations. And so we build three to five, and we drive traffic to these small towns. They're utterly charming. So the local tattoo artist is making a couple hundred bucks of us every month. The restaurants are making a couple thousand dollars off of it. And it's been very, very successful. This was my first project. I have a second project and a third project, and now towns across America are starting to contact me about what we're doing because we're really showcasing these towns and what they have to offer. All right, let's get to the subscriber questions because they had some good ones. It says, um, what do most people need to know that most people never talk about when it comes to looking to purchase, build a tiny home or a container home? It's the zoning. You have to make sure you can actually do it. Yeah. And a lot of people think, hey, I'll just buy this property and I can build. But if again, if it's on a basically trailer, you need a campsite. Right. And there's almost no town in the city that's going to allow you to have a campsite in their town. So zoning is absolutely number one thing. Also, with the planning board, you know, even though the planning board in Warrington were very, very friendly mm -hmm. and amiable to me, um, it was still basically took over a year to get everything ready to go. So mm -hmm. it takes a lot more time than you think. And then the biggest thing is cost. Yeah. It's the bathroom. It's your kitchen that costs money. An empty, an empty room doesn't cost a lot of money. You can build an empty room for $10,000. Mm -hmm. But when you start adding up the infrastructure, everything else, the cost adds very, very quickly. Because the overall project is maybe under $100,000 but you're paying a lot per square footage. Right. And for example, the shipping container themselves are only about $40,000. Oh. But when you actually add up all the cost, the plumbing, the electrical work, the insulation, you're starting to look at 200 
$250 a square foot. Mm -hmm. So it gets very expensive very quickly. Um, is there any significant difference between building an ADU and building a tiny home on a separate piece of land? On no. Well, I mean, maybe infrastructure. You know, here we had to bring in everything from the base of the roads. Mm -hmm. We had to bring the power in, we had to bring the water in. And if you already have that in your primary residence, it's gonna be a lot cheaper to bring it basically to the ADU. Uh, are you gonna be transfer are you gonna be making these outside of the state now or so yeah, so I'm starting to get quite a bit of interest now because mm -hmm. um it's turned out pretty amazing. You know, the the, the shipping container is absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very proud of it. And um, and people are start starting to contact me about should drop shipping these things across America. Yeah, so these are shipping containers. They're meant to be on trucks. And so we will start selling these across America and we will start drop shipping these early next year. All right, let's get to another question. Okay. What is the longevity of a tiny home? Um, also, as a person with not much money, maybe $5,000 budget, what would be the options to get started? You have to build where no one will ever find you. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, of course you can put up a shipping container and run some cable into it and mm -hmm. make it work but it's not going to be permittable. Um, but that's probably the first way to do it. The, Just um, buy the container first and then slowly but surely build on top of it. It would take, might take you a couple of years though. It, it could. I mean, definitely it would take time. But the issue, of course, is that it's the stick build is not that expensive. So you're, it's not, you're not saving a lot of money with shipping containers when right. it comes down to it. And I think that you can bring the cost down substantially if you build them in the factories. There are ways to reduce your cost. Uh -huh. You still have the infrastructure regardless of how big the place is. Right. You, and that's a misconception. People again think for $4,000 I can buy a home. Uh -huh. But it's not going to be like that if you actually get it built correctly. Yeah, agreed. All right, so next question. Can this home, any of these homes, sustain uh, snow or hurricane winds? Um, what needs to be done to the land to prep for the building? And what areas do you serve other than North Carolina? So right now I'm serving just North Carolina, but um, this is made for snow. I mean, mm -hmm. it is built, but it's not, it's not made for hurricanes. Right. Because we're not by the coast. Right. We have to do a little bit additional, basically, um, structural integrity for that. Yeah, and when it comes to manufactured homes, they have like zone one, zone two, yes. and zone three, and that's it, what you'd have to have your... Exactly. So if exactly. you're building it yourself, yes. that's what yes. you have to put in consideration. It, it, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Could you stack one shipping container on top of another? You can definitely do that. Yeah. You, you can't do that, but again, that's a different cost, and that's not my expertise at this moment. <laughs> it will really. be, though. It, 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 could, it, it, it could be. It, it could be. I mean, Olivia Stratton says, I'd like to ask him about the moisture issues. In a lot of container homes I've experienced, there's been some moisture issues. Can it be solved, or would this always be a risk? No, so this has been solved. So we're actually doing spray and insulation. Okay. It's extremely robust, two inches. It's an incredible base of insulation. And it was interesting, when we were building the one tiny home before, it was about um, 100 degrees in there during the summer. Mm -hmm. And then we sprayed it, and we still hadn't put in the siding on there, and it dropped down to 75 to 80 degrees. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the moisture is completely taken out of it. So spray foam it is? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Taryn said, how would you approach a building, a tiny home for under 20,000? It'd have to be really tiny. It'd have to be really tiny. And I think, I think the rule is that to build actually a house that you can live in, I think the very smallest, I think is 150 square feet. Yeah. It's the very smallest. Mm -hmm. And you have to build on your own. Most cities allow you to build your own primary residence uh -huh. if it's under $30,000. Yes. That's how it usually works. So hypothetically, if you buy your own material and you didn't rent it out, uh -huh. you could probably pull it off. Do you know how they really do that though? This is how they really mess it up. Okay. They'll tell you that it has to be built for under 30,000, but it has to be over 600 square feet. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. So it, it's 500 or 600 yeah, square feet. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, good luck with that, especially yeah. with material costs yeah. today. Yeah. Uh, Michael Jolly said, I'd like to know how to start with one module, then buy others de uh, dedicated to it. Can you add modules to your container homes? Like, could you add more to it once it's built? Or that uh, would no, be- I mean, you, Absolutely, I mean, you could. I mean, it's like any addition to any house. Right. You can always add. I mean, it'd be probably good that you start thinking about that before you build, mm -hmm. so you're gonna make your life easier. But you could always add, as long as, again, it's you're, you're following codes. Right. It's not an issue. Yeah. You need to start a YouTube. Do you have, are you on TikTok or anything like that? Not really. Do you have on Instagram? I, I have Instagram. I, I'm so focused on this right now. Yeah. I haven't had time to really 
to market this as much as maybe I should. Uh -huh. But the interesting thing is that people have been coming to me all the time at this point. I did that. I know, I know. <laughs> and I, and I, and I, and I, I appreciate that. It's been uh -huh. great, you know. It's a symbiotic relationship. We built something really pretty. Uh -huh. you know, again, the town of Warrington is a fantastic place. Uh -huh. I want to showcase to people what we have out here. Right. And I appreciate you coming to find us. So I've been, you know, I've been doing this for over a year now, a year and a half, and I've had multiple people laughing the next day, calling me, saying, you know, Michael, mm -hmm. um, we thought our dog escaped, and it turned out it had gone into the, um, Bathroom. Into the bathroom and pass down the floor because they're heated. <laughs> good on them. Yeah, I know. Good for them. They really, they really are nice. And that's, I think that's a, a, a prime example of what we figured out later on is that their small touches, perception wise, are very luxurious, but don't cost a lot of money. So that floor there is about $1,000 worth of labor and material. $1,000 for a heated floor, and it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. Well, that's really good for Airbnb too. Those People extra touches yes. yes. will get you better reviews, better reviews, get you more business. Exactly. So if I you're totally thinking agree. about doing that for... But that, that's something I, I highly recommend everyone does. Maybe not Hawaii, but anywhere else, heat of floor, <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> Probably won't name you that in Louisiana about twice a yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. So but you, you'd be surprised. <laughs> no, I know. I live there. Yeah, yeah. It was 20 degrees when I left. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there any special aspects of building um, an electrical co codes that pertain to container homes? Absolutely not. This, okay. is, this is a house. Okay. We follow all codes just on a much smaller scale. So there's no difference for us. Okay. If you're doing it again, maybe on a trailer, there's probably some sort of rules that I'm not aware of. Right. But I imagine there are some. Right. But for us, exactly the same as anybody else. Okay, gotcha. Is there an IDC listing required? So I know that for, for at least for mortgages, right, 400 square feet is the bare minimum that they'll basically um, finance. Rent. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And I believe that that would also be the same for that, that subject as well. Oh, I'd be seeing, yeah. okay. Yes. Is there any uh, foundation requirements? Do you have to have it on a specific foundation or is that, that depends on your state, correct? It has, yeah, it has to be with local ordinances and all that. Right. Be it slab or, um, you know, concrete piers. I right. like the concrete piers. I like the look of it, uh -huh. and it kind of exposes everything because things don't get that cold in North Carolina in general. Uh -huh. You can expose kind of your basically your plumbing to a certain degree. But we did learn the hard way last week. It was mm -hmm. sixty degrees, and so we had some issues. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of depends. But it has to be on some sort of foundation. Yeah. So you got all your questions answered from a tiny home builder. Now that you have, are you going to be building your own tiny home? Are you going to be doing your own Airbnb tiny homes? Are you going to be building one for your let me know in the comments section below. To watch some of our videos about tiny homes, my friend Ellen Pitts did one and she's actually here with me and she's gonna be answering all the specific questions about tiny homes in South Carolina. So you're gonna watch this video right here to watch a video from a lady who built a tiny home herself out of a shed. You're gonna watch this video right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.